Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome all of you to the ASEAN Korea Trade and Investment Roundtable 2021 on live, co-organized by the ASEAN Korea Center and the Korea Institute for International Economic Policy. My name is Eun Young Lee from the ASEAN Korea Center, and it is my great pleasure to carry on today's meaningful event under the theme, Regional FTAs, ASEAN and Korea Economic Cooperation. We express our sincere appreciation to excellencies, speakers, panelists, and all the online participants from ASEAN and Korea who are with us this afternoon. Speakers and panelists, kindly be informed that today's program will be translated simultaneously. Thus, we would like to seek the cooperation of all the speakers and panelists to speak at a moderate speed. For speakers participating via Zoom, please click the interpretation menu below and choose your language. Now, let us begin by inviting His Excellency Kim Hae-yong, Secretary General of the ASEAN Korea Center for the opening remarks. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon. Uh, 안녕하십니까. President Kim Hong-jong, uh, Korean Institute for International Economic Policy, and His Excellency Hung Yen Butung, uh, Ambassador of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam to Republic of Korea, and distinguished speakers, guests, ladies and gentlemen, and online viewers. I am pleased to welcome all of you to the very first ASEAN Korea Trade and Investment Roundtable to, to the venue to identify major trade, investment, and FTA issues, and to discuss the potential areas of economic cooperation uh, between ASEAN and Korea. Uh, I wish to extend my gratitude to President Kiev and his staff for their devotion and commitment. ASEAN Korea Center hopes to strengthen partnership and cooperation with Kiev and its distinguished group of experts through today's roundtable session. I'd like to also uh, express my sincere appreciation to Ambassador Ung Yan Butung, who has joined us today and is the ASEAN Committee Chair in Seoul. And also, uh, I appreciate the ASEAN Committee in Seoul for their unwavering support for the ASEAN Korea Center. Perhaps Ambassador Butung is the very uh, busiest person that I know. And he has to attend every occasion which the, our center has organized this month and is heavily concentrated on this month. I really take this opportunity to thank him on behalf of the ASEAN Korea Center. Distinguished guests, without doubt, the global economy has experienced the deepest recession in a nearly a century after the Great Depression in the 1930s. The COVID-19 started as a health threat but has extended to global economic and social crisis that it intensified the trade tension and rationale for the protectionism. Even though major economic indicators have been showing positive signs of recovery, new waves of infection and slow rollout of vaccines are prolonging the pandemic and dampening the optimistic expectation. Despite many uncertainties and challenges, ASEAN and Korea have remained steadfast partners throughout 2020. Both gathered to overcome the challenges through joint efforts as they had done during the ASEAN financial crisis back in 1997 and global financial crisis in 2008. Even at the height of the pandemic, strong trade relations have mitigated the economic shock, leading to a mere 5% drop in trade volume in 2020. 
ASEAN has maintained the second largest trading partner for Korea for five consecutive years. In terms of investment too, ASEAN remains the second largest destination for Korean companies. Distinguished guests, since the ASEAN Korea FTA entered into force in 2007, trade volume between ASEAN and Korea has doubled from $71 billion in 2007 to $144 billion in 2020. Although this cannot be attributed entirely to the FTA, it has greatly promoted trade in a more mutually beneficial way, achieving remarkable success. Moreover, ASEAN and Korea are once again seeking to further strengthen the economic partnership. Last November, Korea joined the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, known as ALSEP, with ASEAN countries. As the world's largest FTA, comprising about 30% of global GDP, GDP and about one third of the world's population, RCEP is expected to bring more benefits to ASEAN and Korea, complementing ASEAN Korea FTA. In closing, the pandemic has shown no country can fight global risk alone. Mutual cooperation is the key to inclusive recovery and growth for both ASEAN and Korea. Against this backdrop, ASEAN Korea Trade Investment Roundtable is being hosted at a very crucial time. Speakers, panelists of today's roundtable will touch on key issues of trade and investment in the region. What is stand out in this discussions today is the growing importance of mutual, uh, mutual cooperation and how it will shape or reshape the ASEAN Korean economy in the post COVID-19 era. I hope that today's roundtable contributes to find a new momentum to the ASEAN-Korea partnership. In this regard, the ASEAN-Korea Center hopes to hold a roundtable session annually with the care to address major economic and trade issues between ASEAN and Korea. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary General. Next, please welcome Dr. Kim Hung Jong, President of Korea Institute for International Economic Policy, for the opening remarks. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kim Hong Jong, President of Korea Institute for International Economic Policy. His Excellency Kim Hong Jong, Secretary General of the ASEAN Korea Center. His Excellency Eun Bo-tun, Ambassador of Vietnam to the Republic of Korea. And Mr. Braskova, Kong Su General, Assistant Director of External Economic Relations Division of ASEAN Secretariat. And all the discussants and participants who are joining us online, I'd like to express my gratitude to all who are joining the 2021 ASEAN Korea Trade and Investment Roundtable, co organized by ASEAN Korea Center and Kiev. Today, Korea and ASEAN are recognized as key partners in all areas, including economic and social cooperation in trade, investment, and cultural exchanges. ASEAN is an essential and strategic partner in the new Southern policy. Since the establishment of dialogue partnership in 1999, Korea and ASEAN have continued to expand cooperation in various fields. ASEAN is Korea's second largest trading partner and also the second uh, largest investment partner. And Korea is ASEAN's fifth largest trading partner and seventh major investor. Recently, exchanges between Korea and ASEAN have been actively carrying on, not only in the economic sector, but also in the cultural sector. Young people in ASEAN are enjoying watching Korean dramas like Squid Game, and in Korea, the film 
Nang Song jointly produced between Korea and Thailand was released in the first half of this year despite pandemic. Korea and ASEAN recognize the importance of these two sides' economic exchanges and have been striving to lift trade and investment barriers and promote economic exchanges. And one of the achievements is the Korea ASEAN Korea FTA. Since its entry into force in 2007, the NK FTA. Uh, has expanded the scope of liberalization through continuous upgrades for 14 years. And such efforts have uh, led to also negotiations, and which began, the negotiation began in 2012, but it was concluded in 2020. Despite the challenges caused by the prolonged negotiation period, ASEAN repelled the spirit of ASEAN centrality by putting efforts of reconciliating the dialogue throughout the negotiation process. As a non ASEAN FTA partner facilitator, Korea actively contributed to coordinating sensitive issues such as rules of origin and helped achieve the world's largest mega FTA signing. In such a worry, um, sluggish thing. Uh, the supply chain of the world due to a pandemic. Uh, however, the conclusion of our set is considered timely and has a great significance. Currently, we are facing challenges that we have never experienced before. The emergence of trade conflicts between the U.S. and China and protectionism have shaken our existing efforts to liberalize trade and investment. And also, the pandemic is threatening the global supply chain by slowing domestic economic activities. Fortunately, the international community is sharing wisdom and resources, including vaccines, by cooperating with each other. Korea is also supporting quarantine efforts in ASEAN through the new Southern policy to help overcome the pandemic. It gives us hope that this dark tunnel will come to an end. The RCEP signed last year, as well as the Korea ASEAN FTA, will be an additional driving force to promote trade and investment. We have experience in the process of implementation, the AKFTA. I think we'll find some areas to complement while carrying out the RCEP. Today's discussion of a group of experts representing the field of trade investment in FDA, we will have a place to work together with them together. The Korea ASEAN, the ASEAN Korea Trade and Investment Roundtable 2021 is a seminar co-organized by the ASEAN Korea Center and Kiev. I hope this event will serve as an opportunity for two organizations to continue to cooperate to promote exchanges between Korea and ASEAN. I'd like to express my gratitude to Kim Yeo, Secretary General of the ASEAN Korea Center, participants from ASEAN and speakers and also panelists who are joining online. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim Hong-jong. Last but not least, please welcome His Excellency, Ng Yuen Butung, Ambassador of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam to the Republic of Korea, and the Chair of ASEAN Committee in Seoul for his congratulatory remarks. Please give him a big hand. Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ambassador Kim Hae-young, uh, Secretary General of the ASEAN Korea Center. Uh, Dr. Kim hyung Chong, President of the Institute for International Economic Policy. Uh, presenters, participants, first of all, let me uh, express my sincere thanks for having me in this very important roundtable. I think this roundtable is organized in a very timely way. Uh, we know that uh, by the uh, second half of uh, October, the uh, ASEAN-Korea summit would be held with the participations of the uh, state leaders of both sides. Uh, we also know that the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, while it is going on, we see the uh, light at the end of the tunnel, when the uh, social and economic life would be uh, hopefully returned to new normalcy, 
And I think that creates a very good context and conditions for relations between Korea and ASEAN countries to be back in the uh, uh, situation uh, where uh, before the COVID-19 we have had. Um, in terms of policy, I think uh, this the seminar, uh, this roundtable is also timely because we are facing with some new conditions where we can offer our own inputs and policy recommendations in the following uh, sectors. In terms of threats, uh, the ASEAN countries are in the process of ratifying the ASEP, and we are so happy to see South Korea being in the process of ratification of ASEP. Uh, make it uh, um, effective 2022, means, meaning next year. Um, secondly, the ASEAN countries and uh, Korea are also in the process of upgrading the FTA, the existing FTA between the two sides, uh, especially focusing on the loosening up of the constraints on the bilateral trade. Thirdly, and very more, very, and more importantly, we welcome the enthusiasm by Korea uh, with regard to participation of CPTPP that uh, would uh, pave the way for the more balanced and higher turnover between the two sides in terms of trade. With regard to uh, investment, we also see uh, the trend of uh, investment, both sides, but more from Korea to the ASEAN countries. And we also see the opportunities in combining the development of the two economies, Korea and ASEAN, with regard to the newly, um, uh, to the new uh, sectors, including bio, uh, including the uh, semiconductor, as well as inform information technologies. On a greater context, we see the um, implementarity between the two sides, especially in terms of grants development strategy and also in terms of uh, foreign policies. Here, I really want to mean the new Southern Policy Plus that Korea is now attaching greater importance to the relations with, as with ASEAN countries. And I think that the new Southern Policy Plus uh, would be continuing in the next year when the uh, new government is the, uh, formed in, in Korea under the new presidency. So I think that uh, I can agree with the uh, points that have been raised before me by President uh, Kim hyung Chong and uh, Se Secretary General Kim ha Young about the uh, new opportunities for the relations between the two sides, Korea and ASEAN countries, um, especially in terms of uh, trade and investment. And let me conclude my uh, remarks by our promise from the ASEAN committee in Seoul that the embassies of ASEAN countries in Seoul are happy to join the efforts with the uh, Korea ASEAN Center, with Kiev, and with other partners in, pro in the promotion of the relations between our uh, countries on a higher plane. So with that, I would like to wish the, same, the round table great success. Uh, thank you very much for having me here, and thank you very much for attention. I'm Samida. Thank you, Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, today's program consists of two sessions. The first session will deliver keynote presentations, and the second session will be a roundtable followed by Q&A. For online viewers who have questions to the presenters and panelists, please leave your comments 
on YouTube live chat along with their name and affiliation. Their questions will be discussed during the Q&A session. Without further ado, we will start the first session. There will be two keynote presentations. Each presentation will represent ASEAN and Republic of Korea. The speaker of the first keynote presentation is Mr. Brasakura Gumilang Sujana from the External Economic Relations Division of the ASEAN Secretariat. Good afternoon, distinguished speakers, panelists. Ambassador Kim Hae-yong, Secretary General of the ASEAN Korea Center. Dr. Kim Hae-jong, President of, and His Excellency Ambassador Mia Do jong uh, First of all, let me thank the ASEAN Korea Center for inviting the ASEAN Secretariat to this time of the event, especially as we are all trying to manage the pandemic and plan for the recovery. I will try to tell a simple story and throughout you will, throughout you will hear the same sound bites, uh, open markets, digital economy and sustainable growth. Uh, this is of course a story of challenges, but also about how cooperation between ASEAN and Korea could contribute to economic recovery and transformation and how our regional FTAs could strengthen the recovery. ASEAN, like any other regions, has been hit hard by the pandemic. Total cases so far have topped 12.5 million. Fatalities are close to 270,000 across the region. The Delta variant has been especially lethal. In June and July this year in Jakarta, almost everyone lost a relative or a friend. Unfortunately, it continues in waves throughout the region. Government responses have focused on containment, isolation, and vaccination. However, we may need to put in place measures to live with COVID-19, considering that other variants may still emerge in the future. The impact has been a dramatic drop in trade and investment flows and GDP growth. FDI inflow especially is expected to drop by close to 25% in 2020. Uh, while real GDP, while expected to bounce back in 2021, has been revised down by the ADB due to the Delta variant. At the ASEAN level, our pandemic responses are focused on three key measures, securing funding for vaccination, coordinated multilateral responses, and maintaining the flow of goods. On the first, the ASEAN COVID-19 Response Fund is pooling contributions from ASEAN Dialogue and Development Partners, and the fund will be used for regional vaccine procurement program and distribution. In this regard, I would like to extend our appreciation for Korea's contribution of 1 million US dollars to the ASEAN COVID-19 Response Fund. We are also responding through the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, which cuts across five broad strategies, uh, comprising health system, human security, intra-ASEAN market, and broader economic integration, inclusive digital transformation, and sustainability. Other initiatives include the ASEAN Plus 3 Plan of Action on COVID-19, and the joint initiatives on bolstering the economic connectivity between ASEAN and Korea in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. Both of these latter initiatives cover similar issues of keeping markets open for trade and investment, ensuring the flow of goods and facilitating essential movement of people. Finally, the expansion of the list of essential goods is uh, aimed at, uh, to, at ensuring the free flow of essential goods in the region and provide support uh, to the private sector in these difficult times. ASEAN is also at the same time planning a recovery that will help advance our economic transformation agenda. The first part of this is ensuring open markets, partly through regional FTAs, like the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, but also by making sure that non tariff measures can be streamlined to boost exports uh, in the region. The second part is by advancing the digital economy agenda. In this regard, the Bandar Seri Begawan Roadmap, which has been endorsed by ASEAN economic ministers, maps out the steps for ASEAN to advance its, its digital transformation agenda, including by conducting a study on the establishment of an ASEAN Digital Economy Framework Agreement, or DEFA, by 2023, and to commence negotiations on the DEFA by 2025. 
The third part relates to the adoption of advanced technology. Through, for example, the development of a consolidated strategy on the fourth industrial revolution. And finally, we cannot ignore the need for a more sustainable growth in the future. In this connection, the framework for circular economy for the ASEAN economic community sets out the key strategic priorities to enable and enhance trade of circular goods and services. This leads us to this leads us to how ASEAN Korea cooperation could help. These four initiatives uh, on your screen, um, some of which are, are still being finalized, focus on technology and innovation, which is exactly where ASEAN would like to focus. The ASEAN Korea Startups Partnership, for example, has finalized a study on the startup ecosystem and will be followed by an ASEAN Korea Startup Policy Roadmap. As you are aware, ASEAN is home to some of the most dynamic unicorns and decacorns. Despite, despite the pandemic, startups in ASEAN raised some 100 billion US dollars in funding in 2020 and possibly more this year. High growth sectors in the space include e-commerce aggregators, ride hailing and logistics, automotive marketplaces, and travel services. More importantly, ASEAN startups are also bringing traditional sectors online. Um, this includes small traditional retailers uh, or convenient stalls, usually micro or small businesses, and farmers and fishermen, linking them more efficiently to markets. Finally, the next obvious step for ASEAN Korea economic recovery is to further advance our trade agreements. So those startups and SMEs they help can also trade across borders and grow more rapidly. First, the ASEAN Korea free trade area was one of ASEAN's first external FTAs, and we have seen significant growth on trade investment flows from, uh, from Korea. Second, the ASEAN will also provide another way to expedite the recovery uh, by linking our, our SMEs and our uh, companies to regional supply chain. The ASEAN will provide a single set of rules for trade in goods and open market access for services and investment. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not go into great details here as I believe the roundtable sessions will further cover these uh, issues. But let me end my presentation by highlighting some future challenges. There is a need for our regional FTAs to remain relevant to businesses and responsive to emerging issues. Issues such as the digital economy and sustainability are becoming mainstream. And if we don't address them soon, we will be forced to by other trade partners. We did not we need not rush into them, but having a sequenced approach to how to address those issues will certainly help. First, our cooperation programs may need to be deepened and widened to cover some of these issues. Second, we need to review our FTAs, including the ASEAN Korea FTA, to upgrade them and also to consider those emerging issues that are not yet included in those FTAs. Ladies and gentlemen, we can turn this crisis into something meaningful for our economies, hopefully making our regional economy stronger and more resilient, and our economic actors uh, also more connected to the global economy. Thank you for listening to me, and I look forward to a fruitful discussion. Thank you, Mr. Sujana. We will now welcome the second speaker, Dr. Lam Mi Ryong from Southeast Asia and Oceania team of Korea Institute for International Economic Policy. Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Hello, I am La Miryong from the New Southern Policy Department. Today, I want to talk about the ASEAN Korea Economic Cooperation, a present and future. First of all, I would like to talk about the 
FTA, which is the basis for the investment and trade between the two economies. And then after that, I will talk about the present and then future issues, as well as、uh, possibilities for further cooperation between ASEAN and Korea. First of all, you can see this slide that explains about Korea's FTA networks. Korea first signed the FTA with Chile in 1999, and since then,、uh, we have signed various FTAs at the same time. As of now, we have signed 17 FTAs with 57 countries. With Indonesia, Israel, and Cambodia, we have recently completed signing the FTA, and we are waiting for、uh, them to enter into force, just like RCEP. In two thousand four, you can see that our exports and imports with FTA partners、uh, increased really significantly. It was under one percent in two thousand four. But you can see that it soared up to seventy point five percent, or sixty four point two percent in two thousand sixteen, and seventy two point five and sixty two point five in two thousand eighteen. Ah, thanks to such efforts, Korea's trade has grown significantly together with its economy. According to this analysis. You can see that thanks to the FTAs that we have signed, we have grown our sales and exports and imports and trade、uh, at the same time. So they have affected in a very positive way for our country. Among all these FTAs that we have signed, AK FTA. Uh, also affects our trade in a very positive way. You can see that the the effects of ASEAN Plus One FTAs,、uh, and together with the AK FTA, and you can see that in the case of AK FTA,、uh, we could grow the trade volume on both of the sides. And you can see that meaningful changes and meaningful growth have been witnessed with the VK FTA as well. So AK FTA is the foundation for the growth of the trade between Korea and ASEAN. You can see that Korea's share of trade with FTA partners also grew. So with the ASEAN in 2011. Uh, the ASEAN accounted for eleven point six percent, but it went up to fourteen point seven percent in twenty twenty. And for your information, the yellow bar represents RCEP. So it shows the trade with RCEP partners. And as of twenty twenty, you can see that the rate was fifty one point one percent. So, in the case of RCEP member countries, you can see that they are very important and they account very significantly in terms of the trade dependency and trade volume for Korea. So that means it is really important to discuss further、uh, regarding the non-tariff provisions. And how to overcome the current challenges and etc. So early enforcement of RCEP would be very necessary、uh, in the current crisis. And then this slide also backs up my statement. So there have been many research regarding the FTAs of Korea, and it shows that that the FTA promotion policy of Korea has had a positive effect on Korea's economy, and it is same for AK FTA as well. It has shown a positive effect on Korea ASEAN trade. 
However, there are some issues like COVID-19 or uh, economic recession caused by COVID-19 and the trade tension between the U.S. and China. So we need to restructure the uh, current situation. And in order to take the lead, it would be important to sign the new FTAs or uh, implement RCEP as soon as possible. And at the same time, uh, for efficient uh, use of the existing FTAs, uh, we need to focus on the list of the issues that I put on the slide. And in the case of AKFTA, I can mention three big points, as you can see on the slide. First of all, reciprocal tariff rate treatment is important. So we can eradicate this. In the case of AKFTA, it is unlike other FTAs. Reciprocal is really important uh, aspect. So reciprocal tariff rate treatment uh, means that in the case that two sides agree to e remove the tariffs and how, but if these items, those items are still under the tariff measures, then the tariff can still be applied. And if we apply this to the bigger scope, that means that will hamper the free movement between the two sides. So we have to consider this. And with the Philippines and Indonesia, uh, reciprocal tariff still exists. And we need to uh, reduce the coverage of the reciprocal tariff rate treatment in the future. And also, we have to focus on low utilization rate. And I'm going to explain about this later in uh, next slides. And also, we can focus on uh, non-tariff measures. We must make efforts to reduce the non-tariff measures. Now, let's look at the utilization rate and the detailed uh, issues. As you can see here, uh, you see that the utilization rate of ASEAN is 54.1% for export and 84.1% for import. And the red is export ASEAN. Sorry, it's regarding the import ASEAN. And then the blue is import total. So you can compare between the ASEAN and total. And in the case of import, on the average, uh, you can see that ASEAN uh, is better utilized compared to the total. And on the other hand, the export is a little bit lower than the total. And you can see that the utilization rate varies very significantly among different industries. For the export, miscellaneous and machinery and electronic uh, recorded really low rate. Uh, in the case of electronic, uh, rather than AKFTA, VKFTA was utilized more. So that can be one reason. But as you can see in overall, the utilization rate is lower. And then the fundamental reason would be the low utilization rate among the SMEs in Korea. So as a result, uh, we need to uh, come up with uh, measures to increase the utilization rate across the industries, and that will be very important task we must solve together. And then now let's talk about AKFTA and RCEP. So I want to ask this, should both AKFTA and RCEP be important in trade policy? So 
Maybe you may think that one of them is redundant. So, if one of them is redundant, then do we have to focus on either of them? You may have this question in your mind. So, ACRF was proposed by ASEAN, and implementation plans are included uh, in the post COVID 19 era. And you can see that the key priorities. Are to keep markets open, strengthen supply chain, and enable trade facilitation, and sign an early entry into force of the RCEP agreement. And then we also agree with that. So we want to focus that on that so that we can upgrade ASEAN Korea FDA and improve and further facilitate trade and recovery from COVID 19 pandemic. So, from the policymakers' point of view, how should RCEP be used compared to AKFTA in, in a strategic way? So, that's the question we must ask ourselves. And from the user's perspective, how will AKFTA and RCEP, which are overlapping FDAs between Korea and ASEAN, be used efficiently with a spaghetti bowl phenomenon? So until now, I have talked about the AKFTA and the RCEP and what they mean to Korea's FTA networks, as well as the current issues and future um, challenges. And here, I have explained about the Korea Economic Recovery Plan and process. And this is the last part of my presentation. So, in the face of the COVID 19 pandemic, the Korean economy has encountered the two major challenges. First is aiding recovery from a severe economic recession while addressing the structural transformation. So, what I mean by structural transformation uh, is, first of all, The digital economy, the like transformation or transition to a digital economy caused by COVID 19, as well as a growing demand for a green economy. And in order to uh, cope with that, in 2020, uh, the Korean government introduced the Korean New Deal as a national development strategy. And with that, Korea and ASEAN. Uh, we'll find more opportunities for further economic development. So before uh, talking about that potential, I want to give you some ideas about the Korean New Deal. So you can see very simple graph that explains about the Korean New Deal. So we have Korean New Deal 2.0 that was introduced this year, and then the overall structure is very similar. So the core of the Korean New Deal is to uh, make investment in building digital New Deal and Green New Deal. And with that, we grow economy and create jobs and make a transition to digital and green economy. At the same time, so fiscal investment and institutional improvement will be the tools that will be used during this progress. So that's the government's plan. And we have 10 key projects, as you can see on the slide. So I will talk about 2.0. So we have Digital New Deal, Green New Deal, and Stronger Safety Net. And Stronger Safety Net will be upgraded to Human New Deal. They will be upgraded, but structure will be very similar. So what are the key areas under the Korean New Deal? For the Digital New Deal, 
uh, strengthening integration of DNA, digitalization of education, fostering on tech industry, digitalization of social overhead capital, and under the Green New Deal, green transition of to infrastructure, low carbon, decentralized energy, and innovation in the green industry are important. So it's mostly focusing on the domestic policies as of now. And then with the neighboring countries, we will uh, find some ways to apply to the relationship with the neighboring countries really soon. And that is our challenge as of now. And then we will be able to have in-depth discussion about the topic. So how we can build a digital green infrastructure in Korea will be an important topic and in ASEAN countries as well. And then with that, we will be able to find the uh, possible cooperative areas. And one example is that So untact or uh, contactless industry uh, will be important. And then that will be a foundation to vitalize the, uh, the education, digital education infrastructure. So how we can build the foundation uh, for all of these goals will be important for the AKFTA. So that's the end of my presentation, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your presentation, Dr. Lam Miryang. This calls for an end of the keynote presentations. We will now have a short break. The next session, the roundtable discussion, will start at 3 p.m. Korea Standard Time. Thank you. 잠시 휴식 시간을 갖도록 하겠습니다. 다음 세션인 라운드 테이블 간담회는 3시에 시작될 예정입니다. 감사합니다. Welcome back, everyone. Before we start the discussion, I would like to remind our audience that Q&A session will take place after the discussion. If you have questions for the keynote presentations or the discussion session, please leave your comments on YouTube live chat along with your name and affiliation. For the roundtable discussion, we will be covering three main topics, which are first, review and outlook on trade between ASEAN and Korea. Second, review and outlook on investment between ASEAN and Korea. And third, prospects and challenges of ASEAN Korea FTA and RCEP. For today's panelists, it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Gilbert Jung from Korea International Trade Association, Dr. Aladdin D. Rilo from Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia, Dr. Jung Young Shin from Korea Institute for International Economic Policy, Mr. Ng Yuen Kwang Lung from ASEAN Coordinating Committee on Investment, Mr. Chan Dong Wook from Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy of Korea, and Ms. Alpana Roy from Ministry of Trade and Industry of Singapore, attended as panelists. And finally, Mr. Joshua Witekwa, the, uh, the Head of Trade and Investment Unit of the ASEAN Korea Center, will lead the roundtable discussion as moderator. Please welcome the moderator and panelists on stage. Hi, good afternoon distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, as well as online viewer. So uh, welcome back to the second section of the ASEAN Korea Roundtable discussion. Uh, mainly for this roundtable discussion, we will be concentrating on trade, investment and FTA issues. But uh, kindly be reminded that uh, there will be uh, instantaneous uh, translation. So I would just like to remind the panelists uh, as well as the online panelists that we, are, we need to uh, speak at uh, moderate speed. So uh, before we continue the roundtable discussion, so just allow me to briefly introduce our distinguished panelists today. 
So uh, for the trade uh, section, we have uh, Dr. Gilbert uh, Jung from uh, Kita. He is a research fellow and he is currently writing report as at Kita and he gave lectures on ASEAN economy and international trade at Korea University and Hanguk University uh, for the trade section. And then we have Dr. Aladdin as well, who is uh, currently a senior economic advisor for IRIA. And prior to that, he worked at ASEAN Secretariat uh, in which he served the latest as Deputy Secretary General for ASEAN Economic Community. So those are our panelists for the trade section. Next, we have the panelists for the investment section. We have uh, Dr. Uh, Jung Yong Sin, which is uh, the, he heads the Southeast Asia and Oceanic team at KIAP. And next, we have Mr. Nguyen Quen Long from Vietnam. He is from the Ministry of Planning and Investment, in which he is actually representing ASEAN Coordinating Committee on Investment. And, and not last but not least, we have the FTA section, in which we have Dr. Uh, Jung Dong Wok, which is the director in the East Asia Free Trade Agreement FTA Bureau in the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy, MOTI. He is joining us online. And we have uh, Ms. Apana Roy, Director, ASEAN Trade Division, Ministry of Trade and Industry, Singapore. And uh, welcome, distinguished panelists, and thank you for joining us for the second section. So uh, next, without further ado, we shall uh, continue to the first section. So that's the first section will be uh, Dr. Gilbert Jung as well as uh, Dr. Aladdin. And so the first question, uh, Dr. Gilbert, so kindly share with us your thought in relation to post-COVID-19 ASEAN-Korea economic trend as well as the ongoing economic process. What kind of trade cooperation uh, shall we endeavor to implement in the near future? Dr. Gilbert, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, everyone who's like, uh, have been um, putting efforts in organizing this important event. Um, uh, I feel really honored. Uh, the economic cooperation between two economies has been dealt in the presentations quite a lot. Now, I'd like to move our focus a little towards how the trajectory of ASEAN economy will be and why economic cooperation between the two economies are essential in, 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 right at the moment and the way forward. In order to answer the question on how the trajectory of ASEAN economy will be, we need to ask questions about the current status of the world economy. Are we seeing the signs of strong demand or uh, maybe the world economy is now moving towards stagflation? In my opinion, uh, the world economy is facing a lot of headwinds. U.S. Treasury bond yield for 10 years actually moved quite uh, in, in a fast manner from 1.1 to 1.5 um, uh, to the speed in which we do not see it uh, that much often. Uh, but uh, as we are aware that the Fed uh, commented about the inflationary pressure um, that is uh, transitory, so, which means it's not going to last for a long time. I believe that the, uh, the fact that the inflationary pressure is mounting is because of logistical problems that uh, the US has at the moment. I think like over 60 container ships are waiting outside of the LA port. And, um, and I think it's because of the, um, the protocols related to the uh, COVID-19 and the workers do not want to go back to the workplaces. Um, as these problems may go down a bit in, in the month to come, I think the inflationary pressure will be lowered. Um, and of course, you know, the vaccination penetration rate is rising at the moment. And, and, and we all know that the Merck has the pill for COVID-19 treatment. Um, and also that is adding um, the trend that the world economy will be normalized uh, if, um, 
this month or um, if not, uh, for a month to come. Um, and if you're looking at the equity markets, um, it's showing strong resilience, economic resilience, when it comes to cyclicals and industrials. Um, and in this regard, I believe um, ASEAN economy will be okay and, and very positive in the future. But we also have to look at the policy measures when it comes to uh, containing the spread of COVID-19. As a matter of fact, um, maybe due to lack of resources, ASEAN economies actually used containment um, and isolation um, as, as measures, major measures. But now they, they might have to think of um, the vaccination penetration. I think that is, uh, that is going to be the key when the orders are mounting to um, ASEAN economies. Uh, second question is on why economic cooperation between the two economies are essential at the moment and the way forward. Uh, of course, I have to talk about the economic resilience again. Um, economic resilience to external shocks is, is quite important in this era of the world uh, trade system. Um, well, witnessing uh, the great division between the U.S. and, uh, and, and China, uh, so the supply chain, the value chain problem is mounting, uh, as a matter of fact. But I think ASEAN could be uh, a bit of like, it's not really 100% replacement uh, of China, but it could uh, play a part in, in the world uh, value chain. Um, in that kind of regard, that Korea is, is quite thankful that uh, we can actually cooperate uh, with the ASEAN economy. Um, um, so, and, and also we're, we're looking at some risks mounting in China uh, when it comes to electric city, uh, there are policy uncertainties and, and all these kind of things. Um, so um, we, we might have to think of like how we can cooperate in, in, in doing okay in the, in the, in the midst of um, all the risks uh, and uncertainties. Um, and in this regard that I would like to uh, suggest a, uh, uh, an idea, but that could be uh, maybe for the later question, mm -hmm. maybe the mod moderator could actually ask. Um, I, I myself, I worked in, in, in um, the um, European Parliament as a policy advisor. And um, EU is, is more like economic integration, the regional integration. And um, when, when I look at the um, ASEAN economy and its uh, in integration efforts, uh, of course, they are doing OK. But uh, ASEAN economies may have to think of how how they do it so that they can actually make it as attractive investment destination. I think in that kind of regard that there are uh, ways to go. Um, and uh, of course, uh, Korean uh, businesses may face some problems when it comes to NTPs, like non uh, tariff barriers, uh, the customs, um, uh, these kind of things. Uh, and maybe that that is one of the reasons why the the FTA utilization rate is not really going up. Uh, maybe the, 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 the economic risks or the costs too much so that they wouldn't have to go through the, uh, the FTA procedures. So th there are uh, so many policy-wise uh, uh, things that we might have to work on. I'll, I'll leave it there, and uh, I'll, I'll come back to you to the, uh, the, the later question. Thank yes. you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gilbert. Next, uh, we would like to invite Dr. Aladdin to share his views with regards to uh, the same issue, with regards to post-COVID-19 ASEAN-Korea economic trend, recovery process, as well as any uh, future trade cooperation between ASEAN and Korea. Dr. Aladdin, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tech, and also good afternoon to everyone. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me in this panel. And I'm indeed, I'm very delighted to be a part of this uh, webinar today. 
In terms of outlook, uh, I fully agree with uh, Dr. Jong that uh, COVID-19 uh, remains uh, in the world today. In many countries like Korea, as well as an ASEAN. Although I think the risk is more balanced now compared to a year ago. Uh, I think this is due mainly to the fact that countries have been able to implement a lot of measures to mitigate the adverse impacts of the pandemic. While uh, recovery is now underway in, in most countries, uh, I think it's the fact that there's still a lot of uncertainty uh, surrounding the outlook. Uh, in fact, uh, if you look at ASEAN, uh, both output and uh, growth momentum in most ASEAN countries, perhaps uh, with the exception of Vietnam, are still expected to remain below the pre-pandemic levels this year. And I think the, the expectation is that uh, they will only recover fully by next year. As a result of that, we expect uh, economic growth in ASEAN to remain at uh, around 3.1% this year, and that will further expand to around 5% uh, next year. When I look at these developments, I think one uh, reason for the economic rebound in the region is the better than expected recovery in the trade sector. Uh, for example, our research from area suggests that uh, COVID-19 did not actually alter the regional production networks and trade patterns in, in East Asia. Uh, in a sense that uh, whatever negative supply shocks being generated initially were eventually overcome at the early months of the pandemic. And this was also offset by positive uh, demand shocks, for example, an increase in demand for ICT products that also helped facilitate the, the recovery. Our research also suggests that there is a very vigorous uh, private sector dynamism in the region. And I think that also helps in the recovery of the trade sector in a sense that the firms in the region are able to uh, rearrange the supply chains. And at the same time, that allowed them to uh, mitigate the impacts of the pandemic, particularly the disruption of the supply chain. Similarly, we noticed that a lot of companies in the region, including the small firms, were able to take advantage of digital technologies uh, to remain afloat during this pandemic. I think all these developments in my view really help uh, uh, the recovery in the trade sector. But when I look at the figures again, despite the dis initial disruption in the supply chains, uh, total trade in ASEAN, uh, I think last year uh, contracted by around 5.5%. Uh, interestingly, when I look at uh, 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 Korean trade with ASEAN, uh, the, the decline is even smaller at 1.5%. And I think what's also significant to note here is that the share of Korean trade to total ASEAN trade last year remained stable at around 5.8%. I think these are, for me, a positive developments moving forward. And also moving forward, I think the, the, the strength or any prospect of recovery in trade in the region, uh, including as well uh, trade between ASEAN and Korea, in my view, depends on three important factors. Uh, the first factor is the availability of vaccination and the strength of uh, medical interventions and containment measures that are being implemented uh, across the, the, the region. I think this is also something that was referred to by Dr. Uh, Jung earlier. Uh, in my view, an increase in uh, vaccination production and uh, and distribution will definitely help countries uh, like ASEAN and Korea to uh, reopen up the economies more quickly, as well as to restart uh, production and trade at a much uh, faster pace. In fact, uh, according to the WTO, any uh, accelerated vaccinations across the world are expected to uh, increase the global uh, growth in, 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 uh, in uh, trade by around two percentage points above the current forecast of growth in uh, global uh, trade of 8% this year. So I think that definitely is, is uh, uh, implying that we need to open up our economies 
through by uh, through these vaccination programs to be able to increase production and trade again. The second factor here is in in my I think that is very important, uh, particularly the role of fiscal policy in boosting uh, demand across different sectors in the region. I, for example, by having all these stimulus measures uh, targeted in specific industries, it will def they will definitely help uh, boost up the, the production and also uh, eliminate any risk in terms of contraction and output. And also, that would allow, in my view, countries to continue to import. And definitely, if that happens, it would definitely support uh, trade in the region. Uh, finally, the third factor that here that I think is very critical to the recovery in trade in the region and in ASEAN and Korea is the, the strength of the trade cooperation in the region. If you look at what's happening in the region, I think there is no doubt that cooperation between ASEAN and Korea has really, really helped uh, keep the trade flowing within the region. And I think this was made possible through the support of various initiatives, such as the, the enhancement of supply chain connectivity, as well as uh, adherence by Korea and, 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 and ASEAN to multilateral trading system. Moving forward, I think this kind of cooperation should continue. But in my view, there are two important areas where cooperation can be further intensified to support post-pandemic recovery between uh, ASEAN and Korea moving forward. And these two factors are one, uh, dig uh, 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 vaccination. We need to increase the, the production of vaccines as well as the distribution. And secondly is the digitalization. Uh, for example, uh, I think uh, the, the intention by Korea to become a global hub for COVID-19 pandemic vaccines as well as other vaccines for future pandemics is indeed very encouraging. What I'm uh, seeing here is that perhaps uh, the vaccine manufacturers in Korea can uh, uh, work together with the private sector in ASEAN by providing best practices in terms of the production and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, ramping up the production of vaccines is critical in terms of enhancing production as well as trade in the region. And at the same time, I think ASEAN should also take advantage of the, the new Southern Policy Plus, uh, particularly the, uh, the, the intention of that uh, policy to uh, focus more on digital development. Because moving forward, I think the post-pandemic recovery will definitely be uh, uh, benefiting a lot from the strength of digital transformation in both ASEAN and Korea, particularly in terms of promoting greater e-commerce and digital trade services in both ASEAN and in Korea. Therefore, whether ASEAN and Korea are able to work together towards promoting digital transformation would be, in my view, uh, critical in terms of uh, ensuring that trade between Korea and ASEAN will continue to remain robust in the coming years. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think I better stop here and I would uh, uh, later on uh, 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 welcome any questions related to uh, outlook of trade and uh, trade between ASEAN and Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aladdin. We took note that your comment with regards to the need for vaccination as well as digitalization. So next, uh, I would like to like ask Dr. Gilbert one of the questions. We would like to uh, seek your views with uh, on ASEAN and Korea to emerge resilient and strong towards the recovery phase. How can we sustain the momentum of the recovery space? Yes, uh, Dr. Gilbert. I think Dr. Aladdin uh, already mentioned about the, the rollout of um, the, the, the vaccination um, and, and the distribution. Uh, I think it's a bit, uh, I, I remember when, when, the, when the president uh, uh, visited um, the UN, I don't know, like uh, he actually mentioned that he donated um, Quite a lot of vaccines to um, ASEAN economy, uh, which is a really good thing. But it, it can be a fundamental solution, um, and 
And at the moment, it's like, you know, finding out the solutions um, will be very difficult. But I could sort of, you know, mention about maybe a structured way to enhance the resilience, the economic resilience when it comes to the uh, supply chain. Um, as well as the production of vaccine, as in yeah. maybe Korea can share that experience with ASEAN country so that it can yes. enhance the recovery phase. Yes. Uh, I think there will be a lot of uh, a lot of issues when it when it comes to uh, vaccine production, um, because we're not the ones who have the full uh, rights uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to intellectual property rights and you know, all this the contracts. Uh, so I can't really mention about that, but mm -hmm. but I could I could mention um, when when um, one country is in shock that. Maybe we could talk, sort of think of a special economic zone. Uh, take an example of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Vietnam has like borders with Myanmar or uh, Cambodia. So when you establish this kind of uh, special economic zone, you could still use the components of Vietnam, but use um, the cheap labor, mm -hmm. uh, cheap labor uh, from other uh, neighboring countries. That. That is very very good idea, in my opinion, is because uh, China is actually coming up to Vietnam mm -hmm. to overcome the tariff issues that um, that is actually facing significantly uh, to the. Um, so when when you have this kind of things, uh, this kind of system, then steel that we can um, produce goods. And still, Vietnam could uh, enjoy uh, exporting those goods to the best markets. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, they'll be good, and and that is why that I actually mentioned the economic integration is quite important within itself. Uh, in in the European Union, we all, all the time mention about uh, widening and deepening. Mm -hmm. uh, you widen a bit, but you have to actually move the focus into deepening. Uh, you all the time talk about widening, but not really deepening. Then uh, it's gonna, it's not gonna be really balanced. So um, I think it's right time to mm -hmm. think about how we can deepen the economic integration, and and sort of make it um, as attractive yeah. uh, investment destination. Uh, to take advantage of the global supply chain. To, to take advantage of the global supply chain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. Next. Uh, since uh, Dr. Aladdin, you have uh, spoken about digitalization, so um, we, we would like to like, see uh, further views from you with regards to the, we know that there is some expansion of sectors, for example, e-commerce, biohealth, e-learning, virtual technology, no contact technology during this pandemic. Uh, so in your views, what kind of sector should ASEAN and Korea can focus for the enhancement of trade cooperation? Dr. Aladdin. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think given the current developments, uh, in my view, there are two important sectors where uh, trade between ASEAN and Korea can gain, gain further momentum uh, to in the coming years. One is the ICT sector. I think uh, given the fact that the digital transformation has become an important priority for ASEAN and even for and even in Korea for so for many years now. I think this will definitely help uh, uh, the trade in terms of the ICT products. Uh, the way I see it, digitalization is, in, is definitely linked with the uh, greater trade openness and that would involve uh, selling more products. For, for example, uh, computer products, uh, communication equipment, uh, as well as electronic components that would support uh, the, the, the goal of uh, greater uh, digital transformation in, in these countries, particularly in ASEAN, because digitalization has been touted as one of the most, uh, one of the ways forward okay, for the region to sustain the post-pandemic recovery. And I think interestingly, it, it so happened that when I look at the current data, uh, uh, the Korea and also Singapore, Vietnam and Malaysia are are some of the top uh, exporters and importers of ICT products. So what I'm saying here is that there is already a momentum there. It's just up to Korea and ASEAN to work together 
to ensure that they take advantage of, uh, of, of all these uh, greater trade flows in, in the area of ICT sector. Uh, another area here that I think is critical is infrastructure. This is another uh, sector that is important uh, to support a higher, uh, a greater connectivity in ASEAN. And of course, when I talk about the infrastructure sector, we're talking about goods such as uh, electrical machinery and equipment, also iron or steel and aviation goods like vehicles. Uh, and this is something that would really help uh, ASEAN moving forward in terms of ensuring that greater con connectivity is uh, uh, ensured that would support deeper economic integration in ASEAN. And related to infrastructure uh, sector, in my view, are those are goods that what are, are the environmental goods. And for me, this is very important to support sustainable industries in ASEAN, and including in, in Korea. As we all know, this uh, pandemic has highlighted also not only the importance of digitalization, but also the need for ASEAN countries to be able to seriously uh, take a serious look at the importance of digitalization. So they, I think it's about time for ASEAN to really focus on how we can support all these sustainable industries. And again, when I look at the data uh, of trade between ASEAN and Korea, uh, it's interesting to note here that Korea is both a leading exporter and importer of these environmental goods. While in ASEAN, we have Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, and Vietnam as the top exporters. Therefore, there is definitely a strong complementarity uh, of trade in environmental goods. And I think this will definitely uh, help moving forward in ensuring that we're not only generating trade in the region, but we're also ensuring that whatever trade is being generated would definitely lead to a more sustainable development uh, in both ASEAN and in Korea. So those are the two sectors, uh, Mr. Chair, that I think are crucial for me moving forward, particularly when we talk about post-pandemic recovery, and also in view of the fact that priorities like uh, digitalization and sustainability are important priorities moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aladdin. Um, that uh, concludes our trade section, but uh, viewers online can still uh, provide us a question uh, on the YouTube chat, and then we will be uh, coming to your question at the end of the session. So next, we will move on to the investment uh, section, in which uh, the speaker will be Dr. Chang Yong Shin from Kiap, as well as Mr. Nguyen Chuan Long from uh, CCI. So. Uh, first, we would like to invite Dr. Chang to give uh, his views with regards to ASEAN-Korea investment trend and recovery process in the post-COVID-19 era and how can ASEAN-Korea facilitate investment in the region and to build a supply chain. So, Dr. Chang, the floor is yours. First of all, I'd like to thank the... Um, the organizer for inviting me to the ASEAN Korea Trade and Investment Roundtable, and my name is Chang Yong Shin from Korea. And today I'd like to talk about the Korea ASEAN Investment, uh, the fruits that we have with, and uh, what are the areas that we're going to uh, develop. So today I'd like to talk about the review and outlook. I'd like to start by the status of investment in the area and the, the changing environment in the cooperation, especially um, during the uh, post-COVID. So how it's going to impact investment and what are the responses that we have to take? As you can see, inflow, investment inflow to ASEAN increased a lot. In 2000, it was about 22 billion US dollars. However, in 2019, it increased to whopping uh, 156 billion US dollars. So it is about one, uh, the proportion uh, out of world FDI amount has grown from 1.6 to 9.5%. As you know, the ASEAN investment inflow has exceeded that of China. Uh, 
from 2011 to 2020 for each five years. If I compare the inflow to China and to ASEAN, you see this investment flow is much high. In 2011 to 2015, it was about uh, from 2011 to 2015, and also in another five years, about 5% increase. However, in the same period, I could see that there was 30% increase to ASEAN. So investment to China was replaced, to, replaced by investment to ASEAN. Due to COVID-19 in 2020, the new investment to ASEAN was sluggish, so that impacted big projects, and that impact that caused a more investment, slight up in um, investment to China. However, I can see the trend um, is rising in terms of investment amount in ASEAN. Not only Korea, that only. Um, other countries, but for Korean businesses, ASEAN is an attractive investment destination. So the investment from Korean businesses to ASEAN has increased. I'd like to look at the figure 2019. The FDI2 world compared to that. The ASEAN investment was about 10 billion um, US dollars. So the overall ratio is 15%, but if I uh, include manufacturing, that's exceeding 20%. In the past, Korean businesses made a lot of investment to China. However, as you can see from the graph on the right side, the investment to ASEAN and China, you can see that the ASEAN investment has exceeded that of China. With the implementation of New Southern Policy 2017 with the visit of President Moon Jae-in to Jakarta that we've seen over the last four years. In 2017, it was 12.5 percent, but um, after four years, it has increased to 16 percent, especially manufacturing and finance and shipbuilding. We have seen uh, various uh, investment channels increasing. In 2017, ASEAN investment uh, increased four, uh, sorry, decreased four, four percent year on year. However, every year we are seeing that every year the investment ratio is growing. So by country, let's compare the investment. However, uh, due to time constraints, I cannot cover all the nations. All the countries are seeing increased investment, but I'd like to point out top three. Please look at the graph. In 2020, about 500 million investment was made to ASEAN. Depending on the statistics that, uh, of course, I can present you to um, different numbers. However, in 2020, that we have seen 17 or 18 folds increase. So by country, Singapore topped the list, Vietnam and Indonesia followed. FDI portion to ASEAN uh, was Singapore as number one. With Samsung Electronics that we are working closely with Singapore, uh, but I'm sorry because of the Samsung Electronics cooperation with Vietnam that we are seeing that there have been great increase in investment to Vietnam. And especially financial sector, about 60% increase. And also real estate and manufacturing have seen great investment. In Vietnam, manufacturing has been a steady investment destination. However, around 2019 that we have seen insurance and finance sector have garnered more investment. 
the recent Uh, recently, Korean businesses have invested a lot in Vietnam, especially in finance. By 2017, FDI from Korea to Indonesia increased. However, 2017-2018, we are seeing the more uh, investment from Korea to ASEAN, to especially Indonesia. And one unique point that I'd like to introduce is that the service sector uh, started receiving investments starting from last year. INICEP uh, is going through ratification process. So when um, it becomes a full uh, enforcement, then it's going to see more uh, investment in service sector. And I'd like to point out about the global investment uh, environment changes and last year and the year before that we have seen that the protectionism and also the US-China conflict. And we have witnessed the multilateral system weakening. And on top of that, we have gone through the global spread of COVID-19. So that has affected the cooperation environment in Asia. So strategic conflicts between the U.S. and China are affecting ASEAN and with the spreading of protectionism that the ASEAN and region is, uh, is uh, worrying about it. And that has uh, impacted the restructuring uh, of restructure of the supply chain. And that has also affected the accelerating transition to the digital economy that has increased the demand for cooperation in the healthcare sector. And with the increasing financial expenses, um, that also we have to be careful about financial market volatility. So by considering all that, for Korea to strengthen um, economic cooperation ties with ASEAN, what can we do? Over the last four years, the new southern policy has shown great momentum from the early stage of administration. The NSP has been implemented actively, and there have been wide discussions about it. There have been, of course, good things we have done, but also areas to improve. One thing we have to keep in mind in terms of NSP is that the, the policy has been implemented in line. So this policy has its own brand in this region. However, we need to continue to implement with the same direction. And as um, early as Dr. La mentioned earlier, Korea's New Deal policy involves digitalization. So we have to combine K New Deal plus NSP to integrate the regional market. So these are the areas that we are uh, working to combine the K New Deal and NSP. I believe that the ASEAN and Korea have their own strengths and the, there are areas that we need to work together. We need to find out that first. Of course, each country has different needs. ASEAN has young population, large and young population, and they have good resources. However, in terms of type of business, The ASEAN region, region has to, I mean, the region has the potential as a consuming market. Uh, Korea, uh, Korea has um, experienced human resources, and also we have uh, 
wonderful experience in manufacturing and IT. And as I mentioned earlier, that we have a strong willingness to implement a new southern policy and the private and public sector are working together closely to carry on the new southern policy. So these are the good things we have about ASEAN Korea. So by recognizing the advantages of these two regions that we have to work on not only on traditional infrastructure like transportation, but we need to work on new uh, industry. For example, dist digitalization in the automatic sector, because we are seeing that the automatic sector is switching to become e-car, uh, EV. So in that sector, we'll probably need uh, co-R&D, and especially in the sector of finance, uh, fintech is uh, needs a lot of uh, cooperation and biosector, and all these areas need support and cooperation between these two regions, not only for uh, creating opportunities for businesses, but also under the big uh, principle of NSP that we'd like to integrate the market. Uh, the reason that we are providing fintech services is to provide more access to the people who have low access to financial services. So by considering such uh, characteristics of the market that we have to implement uh, policies for the people in the region. And as uh, earlier, as other presenters mentioned earlier, that we have to further develop the existing FTA and Korea, Philippine and Korean Malaysian FTA should be settled down um, quickly. Recent FTAs have shown that the economic cooperation It's more important than ever because the FTA needs, I mean, we need to more uh, put more focus on economic cooperation in terms of implementing FTA. Of course, business cooperation, but also the government cooperation should be emphasized. Due to the COVID-19, we cannot meet often, but it is still important that for us to meet often. So not only research researchers like us, but we need to meet uh, with the uh, policy makers and uh, government officers. And if there are issues or the things that we need to cooperate, that the uh, government officials have to uh, exchange their opinions. That's why uh, I believe today's this roundtable is very important. So investment and economic uh, cooperation is one level, the first level, but with the diversified uh, cooperation when the ties are close. Not only Korea makes investment to ASEAN, but we expect to see uh, ASEAN invest in Korea more. So not only the certain top three countries, but we'd like to see Korea's active um, economic exchanges with other countries in ASEAN. So I believe that there will be first and the second, third stages of economic tie development. That is the end, thank you. give the floor to uh, Mr. Long from uh, Vietnam. Mr. Long, the floor is yours to share some views with regards to ASEAN Korea investment trend, as well as how do we facilitate investment in this post COVID-19 region. Mr. Long, the floor is yours. Dr. Chang for a comprehensive uh, presentation that uh, provides us uh, a very sufficient uh, information for the uh, investment trend between uh, uh, ASEAN and uh, Korea. So um, with the consent of the chairman of uh, CCI, I'm honored to uh, represent uh, CCI to attend the event organized by AKC today. And um, 
And uh, I would like to add some information to the, uh, the presentation that Dr. Chang has uh, presented to us is uh, about the structure of the uh, investment, Korean investment in, uh, in respect of the sectors in uh, ASEAN. So as you know, uh, as uh, Dr. Chang uh, has said, the manufacturing and processing industry is uh, considered the most important sector with uh, accounting for about one uh, third of Korean total investment capital per year in, in ASEAN. Um, uh, but uh, along with the de uh, development of economic strength and of the countries uh, in ASEAN and uh, uh, the strong competitiveness in capital and technology of Korean enterprises. So some sectors have uh, recently tended to increase strongly to the form of uh, m and uh, such as uh, investing in the field of uh, infrastructure development, uh, services, uh, finance, uh, insurance, uh, entertainment, uh, information technology, construction, or real estate. Uh, real estate. So, um, uh, taking uh, taking advantage uh, of the ASEAN regions uh, with its uh, huge uh, area, large population, competitive uh, labor cost, and Korean investors are particularly uh, still interested in in ASEAN. So, uh, and by that reason, uh, I think ASEAN is still, uh, uh, is still considered as one of the most attractive and potential reasons uh, uh, maintaining its their status as one of the largest FDI recipients in the developing world. So uh, therefore, I think uh, investment flows uh, from Korea into ASEAN are uh, expected to have a remarkable de uh, development in the coming time, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic is completely controlled. And for the ASEAN uh, policy and measure to, to, um, to uh, resume the investment flow to as the uh, pre-pandemic uh, era. So um, at the end of uh, 2020, uh, ASEAN leaders adopt, adopted the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, uh, shortened in ACRF, is uh, you can imagine uh, imagine is like an umbrella of the uh, economic recovery policy of ASEAN, and in which um, uh, we highlighted the importance of FDI in post COVID uh, regions economic recovery, and accordingly, uh, uh, ASEAN member states. Uh, have uh, developed a framework, uh, it's called Investment Facilitation Framework, uh, uh, shortened in AIFF. So uh, this is to, uh, to have uh, ASEAN member state to focus on uh, improving the uh, attractiveness of uh, the economies uh, as investment destinations uh, through a good uh, regulatory practice and better policy uh, certainty and transparency, uh, better infrastructure uh, and connectivity. Uh, this is included uh, and particularly in uh, digital connectivity and also the ease of doing business and building human capital through upskilling and reskilling of their workforce. Um, so the uh, AI uh, and also the AMS, uh, support and incentives uh, toward uh, responsible business conduct could also pave the way for sustainable economic development in the region. And this is include uh, ASEAN orientation, which is to promote uh, sustainable investment and to explore smarter incentives for investment in the sector, contributing, contributing to sustainable development. Um, uh, regarding to investment cooperation between ASEAN and Korea uh, in the coming time, uh, I think making you a good use of the advantages uh, brought by RCEF and AKFDA will be the foundation to further facilitate uh, investment flows uh, from Korea into ASEAN. And uh, besides, uh, Korean's, uh, Korea's new Southern policy and new Southern policy plus 
are also expected uh, to bring more mutual benefits as well as to sustain investment and trade uh, for both uh, ASEAN and Korea. And uh, in the short term, uh, ASEAN and member states uh, um, are effectively implemented uh, the policy with Corona, which means uh, uh, all the, uh, the COVID-19, as the COVID-19 being gradually uh, controlled, uh, the reopening of production and easing of social distancing measures are also being uh, effectively implemented by the AMS. And uh, so, um, so uh, lastly, uh, on behalf of uh, CCI, I, I would like to, to take this opportunity to thank to AKC for its support and contributions uh, to being a bridge to promote investment between ASEAN and Korea. So uh, uh, it's my pleasure to, to have any question uh, from a distinguished speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. So as Mr. Long has mentioned just now, uh, ASEAN have this investment facility framework that they are trying to promote uh, cross-border investment flow to resume to the uh, pre-pandemic era. So uh, the question is Dr. Jung, so whether, um, what is your view that the, whether the investment flow, will it ever be uh, resumed to the pre-pandemic era? Uh, of course, ASEAN has this investment facilitative framework. So uh, in your presentation just now, you were talking about saying that uh, Samsung will continue to invest in Singapore and Vietnam. So, yeah. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. In terms of investment in the first year of COVID-19, which was 2020, and actually the investment was not dropped uh, dramatically, but in 2021, the first uh, part quarter of 2021, the investment was slightly down. It was because due to the accelerated the lockdown process of COVID in the early uh, part of 2021. I believe RCEP and uh, Korea in the SEPA and with the full um, enforcement of these RCEP and FDA that I believe that the investment will recover eventually with the digital uh, transformation and the energy restructuring change. This will pose another opportunity for us. So in this, pro in this area that I would see that the more increased investment and I can see some movements so in the long term, my view, there currently our structure in investment is focusing on one certain countries. However, with the RCEP and more FTAs, especially with Malaysia, uh, with the full impact of the FTA, I believe that the investment channel will be diversified uh, in the long term. Korean investment to ASEAN, but also would like to see ASEAN investment to Korea. So with this multiple stages, uh, the investment will be active. So we have to work uh, for further development of the investment process. Thank you. So uh, based on your presentation just now, you were saying that the uh, sector that we should concentrate on for future is the smart city digital infrastructure, future industry, joint R&D, and renewable energy. So, Mr. Long, so uh, the question we need to, from the ASEAN side, is that from uh, which sector, which new emerging or existing sector is ASEAN uh, looking for potential investment from Korea in the near future? Yes, Mr. Long? Chair, for your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, in line with the new deal policy, uh, of course, uh, the emerging sector would be some strategic technologies such as semiconductor or new generation battery, biotech, robotic, so on. And also AMS are also um, focusing on attracting investment in sector such as uh, infrastructure. 
energy or uh, biochemical industry or um, processing and manufacturing electricity or electronics, uh, especially on medical and pharmaceutical products. Uh, and also um, uh, recently, uh, AMS are developing more attractive policies and investment incentive for industry and in the fourth IR. Uh, uh, we also publish a new um, public, uh, a, a new uh, research uh, uh, title, uh, ASEAN Investment Report 2020 and 2021, investing in industry uh, in the fourth uh, IR. Um, uh, so in which uh, it focuses on the researching and providing information on developing uh, development trends of FDI in ASEAN, uh, FDI policy environment, and also an in-depth uh, research on investment potential uh, in fourth IR. So I think um, uh, any sector in the fourth IR, uh, for example, ICT or digital transformation is will be the emerging uh, uh, sectors that ASEAN and Korea can be investing for in, in the near future. Thank you. Next, we will go to our third section, which is the FDA section, in which uh, we will be uh, having, we will be inviting representative from MOTI as well as representative from MTI Singapore. So on FTA issue, we will be uh, exploring how the ASEAN-Korea FTA can assist the economic cooperation between ASEAN and Korea, as well as how can uh, RCEP assist in the implementation of uh, future economic cooperation. So uh, for this uh, FTA session, uh, we would like to invite Mr. Jong Dong Wook from MOTI to uh, start first. Mr. Jong, the floor is yours. Uh, Mr. Jong will be uh, joining us online. Nice to meet you. I'm Jong Dong Wook of MOTI. Thank you for inviting me. On behalf of the Korean government, I'd like to talk about Korean government's FTA and RCEP. It gives me an honor. First of all, I'd like to talk about three things. First is Korean government's FTA policy and what we expect from RCEP and for us to recover from the COVID-19, what kind of role RCEP can play. Lastly, I'd like to talk about how RCEP can help SMEs and how SMEs can tap into the RCEP. I'd like to talk about these three big things. First of all, I'd like to talk about RCEP and Korea's FTA policy. RCEP is the largest um, FTA in the world centering around Asia against heightened protectionism of the world RCEP contributes to widened trade we if with the RCEP goes into impact GDP and livelihoods and hiring will increase Especially in the norms area of FTA, there will be three good impacts. First is country of origin and the intellectual property and the e-commerce. For the country of origin, a single country of origin policy will be applied, which will give more convenience to enterprises and especially in the um, intellectual property the actual rights will be enforced and procedure will be upgraded in terms of enforcement norms so our safe countries can better protect their intellectual property lastly in terms of e-commerce in the non-contact economy especially in the COVID-19 era 
we have seen e-commerce as more important ever. In the existing FDA, e-commerce chapter was not included. However, in the RCEP, e-commerce is included. So for us to um, make a better e-commerce environment, RCEP can make a contribution. Lastly, in RCEP, there is a cooperation chapter. So with this important platform, the member countries can discuss various cooperation. According to the accord, the Secretariat and the member countries will continue to seek cooperation projects. The Korean government will work with Kiev to help enterprises and the countries in this region. That was the impact of RCEP and the policy directions the Korean government expects. And the second one, I'd like to talk about the role of RCEP in recovering the COVID-19. RCEP helps us to expand the market, which will give us more opportunities. Therefore, um, companies can tap into RCEP to strengthen their competitiveness and also that they can diversify the supply chain in the region to diminish the relief, the risk, supply chain uh, related risks. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, cooperation chapter is included in the RCEP and although it's not limited in the RCEP, the labor force exchange or the stable um, supply chain can be worked together uh, with the member countries. So this um, cooperative effort will help the countries to accelerate trade and investment. Lastly, RCEP is important for SMEs. SMEs in the short term can compare the concession rates and the country of origin. So by comparing that, they can choose favoring conditions. So whether it's RCEP or Korean ASEAN FTA or Korea, Vietnam FTA, among these different FTAs, um, um, SMEs can find their most favoring conditions and for Korean government this is the first um, FTA with Japan in terms of its impact so this will help us to improve this um, the uh, industrial prowess and the cooperation with Japan I think SMEs can utilize RCEP's cumulative standards of country of origin and which will help them expand exports. In the past, the products which were determined as foreign, I think this new rule can give SMEs concession tariffs and if SMEs can utilize them well, that they can garner good results. Lastly, in terms of procedures, in the RCEP, there is a system like self-certification methods for certified export exporters. Unlike in the past, where the in the FDAs, where the SMEs had to contact some organization, authorizing organizations, however, um, RCEP gives SMEs more um, gives them autonomous certification method, which gives good convenience. And in the long term, will help them to respond to uncertainties. In particular, the COVID-19 has caused uncertainties, especially in the supply chain. Uh, so I think RCEP will provide a legal platform to stabilize the supply chain and as I mentioned earlier this accumulation of origin uh, will help SMEs to tap into the efficiency of the system so the current government plans to continue to provide consulting um, the projects and at the same time that we're helping uh, SMEs for them to educate and um, improve their manpower training so we're co uh, cooperating with related organizations to develop a system to 
manage the country of origin and we are going to operate a single window to address difficulties in the implementation process of the RCEF and we are helping to strengthen SMEs especially for SMEs they don't have enough capacities or human resources to tap into the information of um, RCEF so the government wants to help them to better utilize the new um, RCEF so this is the end of my presentation for more questions I'm going to cover them during uh, Q&A Okay, thank you, Dr. Jung. So uh, next, we have Ms. Apana Roy from Ministry of Trade and Industry, Singapore, to uh, uh, briefly uh, state on ASEAN Korea FTA as well as RCEP agreement. Ms. Apana Roy, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, and a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, can I confirm that before I start that you can hear me well? Yes, yes, yes. We, we can hear you well. Thank you. Uh, first, let me take the opportunity to thank the organizers of this round table for inviting me to share my thoughts on the prospects and challenges for the ASEAN Korea Free Trade Agreement and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Uh, this topic is timely as we address the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and as we prepare for the entry into force of the RCEP agreement in early 2022. Uh, I think as we all know, we are living in unprecedented times and in the last five years, we have witnessed changes that have disrupted the way countries cooperate and how businesses do business. Uh, it started with a shift from globalization to my country first policies. Then we saw tensions between the two largest economies in the world begin to escalate with widespread ramifications. More recently, the world was ravaged by the COVID-19 pandemic. These shifts have not only impacted lives and livelihoods, but have also exacerbated a trend of looking inwards and rising trade protectionism. This is neither tenable uh, nor sustainable. History has shown that the only way out of these situations is through continued and deeper cooperation. Our collective efforts and the solidarity to strengthen frameworks of international cooperation today will hold the key to tackle the next pandemic or crisis far more effectively and swiftly. This spirit of cooperation and collaboration is the foundation of ASEAN-Korea relations, a robust and long-standing partnership spanning more than 30 years. Adjusting to these fundamental changes will require commitment and a clear-eyed recognition of the economic realities of the new normal. In this new normal, trade and economic liberalization and integration must remain essential to economic growth. They are bulwarks against protectionist tendencies and promote greater transparency and certainty for our stakeholders. Upholding an open, inclusive, and rules-based multilateral trading system bears repeating, as this will bolster economic recovery. ASEAN and Korea understand the fundamental importance of this very well. This is reflected in the ASEAN Economic Community Blueprint 2025, where ASEAN aims to become a more dynamic and stronger segment of the global supply chain through deeper integration into the global economy. This is similarly also recognized in Korea's new Southern Policy Plus, which seeks to raise Korea's partnership with ASEAN and other countries to the same level as some of its traditional partners. In 2020, ASEAN and Korea, together with Australia, China, Japan, and New Zealand signed the RCEP agreement to date, the RCEP is the largest FTA covering 30% of the world's population and gross domestic product. The Brookings Institute estimates that RCEP could add a US 209 billion annually to incomes and US 500 billion to world trade by 2030. The RCEP agreement contains streamlined trade rules and enhanced trade facilitation amongst others. This will provide certainty and transparency for businesses trying to navigate in an uncertain world. The signing of the RCEP agreement against the grim backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic signaled to the world that the Asia Pacific is open for business, that our countries continue to remain committed to working together to provide opportunities for our people and growing the region. And RCEP has also redirected the focus away from looking inwards to looking outwards, specifically toward the Asia Pacific region, 
a region where ASEAN and Korea remain bright spots. While global shifts challenge the status quo, they also yield new opportunities. COVID-19 has accelerated digitalization, underscored the need to fortify supply chains and gave rise to the intersection between trade and public health. The nexus between trade and environmental sustainability has also assumed greater importance and an urgency as we all grapple with the effects of climate change. ASEAN and Korea are well positioned to demonstrate our shared desire to collaborate on these issues and seize the opportunities they bring. Our respective efforts make us natural partners to advance this agenda regionally. To this end, ASEAN recently developed the Consolidated Strategy on the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which sets out ASEAN's path to harness the potential of 4IR. Similarly, Korea's New Deal, which comprises the Green New Deal and the Digital New Deal, articulates Korea's goals to transition into a net zero emissions economy and pursue digital policies that will spur economic growth and innovation. The ASEAN Korea FTA will play an important role in helping us achieve this. It provides a solid foundation which we can build on. Since its, since its entry into force, two way trade between our two regions has more than doubled. Meanwhile, the RCEP agreement will undoubtedly boost growth and trade flows in the region. But we must also take a long view and be clear eyed on realities. A number of the RCEP's provisions were finalized prior to the pandemic and may not fully reflect the realities and needs of the new normal. Issues such as sustainability, uh, the ever evolving needs of the digital economy, and how to deal with supply chain disruptions more, more specifically, amongst others. While it, the RCEP will provide a platform for RCEP countries to deepen cooperation, enhancing the ASEAN Korea FTA in parallel can complement the RCEP agreement. The AKFTA, once enhanced, can act as an important incubator to test and collaborate on new and emerging ideas and issues in a smaller and more flexible setting. It can also potentially be an important reference point for what trade agreements should look like in the new normal, as well as act as a pathfinder for future cooperation on new issues at the RCEP platform. We see scope for the ASEAN Korea FTA to play this role in three specific areas, namely addressing digitalization, supply chain connectivity, and sustainable growth. Let me elaborate on these three points a little bit more. First, the digital economy will spearhead post-pandemic economic recovery, but we must also recognize the growing digital divide and ensure MS, our, our micro, small and medium enterprises can access and benefit from this. We must support investments in foundational digital infrastructure, such as digital identity, payments interoperability and data exchange. A sound foundation of digital trade rules will also help improve the transparency and efficiency of digitally enabled trade in goods and services. These efforts will facilitate the participation of businesses in the global digital economy. ASEAN's uh, recently announced intent to develop an ASEAN digital economy framework agreement by 2025, and Korea's recent announcement to join the digital economy partnership agreement with Chile, New Zealand, and Singapore bodes well for ASEAN Korea collaboration in the digital space. Second, we need to explore ways to strengthen supply chain connectivity, which was disrupted by the pandemic, especially to ensure the unimpeded movement of essential medical supplies and vaccines. One way is to address non-tariff measures. While most countries have already committed to keep tariff laws, studies have found a spike in new NTMs in 2020. Another way would be to accelerate the adoption of trade facilitation measures, such as the electronic exchange of trade information that would speed up customs clearance. ASEAN and Korea are like-minded partners given the importance we place on facilitating trade and reducing export restrictions on essential goods. Our ASEAN Korea economic ministers joint initiatives on bolstering the economic connectivity between ASEAN and Korea in response to the COVID-19 outbreak, which we announced last year offers a good starting point. Finally, this pandemic has also offered us a unique opportunity to reposition our econ economies to pursue sustainable growth. With a global shift towards an approach that balances economic development and environmental conservation, there's scope for ASEAN and Korea to look at how we can enhance trade and investment in environmentally sustainable goods and services, 
as well as developing new capabilities to address climate change. One possibility could be for ASEAN and Korea to work to reduce barriers impeding the flow of goods, investments and services necessary to the growth of the green economy. In pursuing collaboration in these three areas, it is important for ASEAN and Korea to seize the opportunities early. At the recent ASEAN Korea Economic Ministers meeting in September, uh, just last month, the ministers welcomed undertaking a comprehensive review of the ASEAN Korea FTA to assess its implementation and identify potential new areas of cooperation. We look forward to a comprehensive study and its findings and to identifying creative ways to ensure that our economic relationship is fit for purpose in the new normal. In the meantime, we encourage interested stakeholders to start reaching out to all our respective governments to provide feedback and suggestions on areas that we should address. Uh, with this, I end my um, talk. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Alpana. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, um, we would like to like uh, just raise a question to Dr. Jung. So because Dr. Jung, you touched on SME just now, so we would like to see your views on what is your advice for SME trying to tap into the opportunities that is provided under RCEP as well as ASEAN Korea FTA. Thank you. Um, in my opinion, ASEAN Korea FTA and bilateral FTAs in the ASEAN region and RCEP can be applied at the same time when RCEP it takes place, takes effect. So for SMEs, what is the most important thing is that they need to understand what kind of information is available and uh, the information about the standards of country of origin and uh, preferential tariffs. Therefore, the government is working to provide one information source and we're um, developing an online system and I think such system can be provided uh, in time when the RSA takes effect. So information is the key. So that's the first thing. And, and the second thing is in relations to e-commerce, I believe RSEV can be a good opportunity for SMEs can tap into opportunities. In the case of ASEAN FTA, there was no commerce chapter. And other FTAs are discussing norms related to e-commerce or digital trade. But in this case of RSEV, 15 countries have agreed on a text. So I think it's important for SMEs to make good use of this and find ways to revitalize trade and trade, trade, I mean through e-commerce, uh, through RCEP. And I think one of the roles of the government in relation to SMEs is cooperative projects. These cooperative projects can be between governments, but also cooperation between public institutions. So I think it's important to continue discussions with the RCEP Secretariat and the committees to expand opportunities for SMEs to participate better. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jung. And uh, with regards to the question to Ms. Alpana, just now you have touched on uh, the existence of the RCEP agreement as well as uh, AKFTA, there will be a review. And then going back to Dr. Lam Young uh, presentation just now, uh, she actually asked a question as to whether RCEP and AKFTA is complementary or is it uh, adding to the spaghetti bowl phenomena? So maybe, uh, you can provide your views on that. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, the, the question is to uh, Ms. Alpana. Just now, I was referring to Dr. Lam Yong's presentation in which she said that uh, we, you have AKFTA and then you have RCEP. Is it complementary in nature or? Thank you very much for your patience. I could hear the last part of your question. Uh, I think it was uh, your question, if I'm, right, if I'm not wrong, was what are we looking out for uh, in the context of uh, reviewing the ASEAN-Korea FTA? Are there particular sectors? Uh, 
Um, I hope that's correct. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Joshua. Uh, if so, then I think uh, I will go back to the three points that I made in my uh, presentation just now, which is really very much uh, three themes. Um, I think both the ASEAN Korea FTA and uh, the RCEP and many agreements that were developed prior to the pandemic um, have very uh, have variations uh, in terms of what they contain. And RCEP, of course, has uh, provisions on uh, e-commerce. I would not say digital trade, but e-commerce, because there's a distinct difference. But I think the evolution of the digital space has moved so quickly that uh, I think we will need to do more uh, on the digital front. And I think that's why you also see uh, the advent and the growing uh, proliferation of specifically digital-only agreements or digital economy agreements. And I think there is scope for ASEAN and Korea to, to collaborate on that front and, and build further depth in there. Uh, I think on supply chains, a point I touched on earlier, uh, certainly we all have uh, trade facilitated provisions in our FTAs, but I think the specific point is simply about uh, what the pandemic has, uh, has uh, given birth to, which is do we have or do we have trade agreements that are specifically able to deal with disruptions in supply chains and how do we then restore disruptions in supply chains? I think so far, some of the provisions have not spoken to that specific scenario as yet. Uh, I think a third area that I spoke about was sustainability. I think ASEAN very clearly does not have those provisions, neither does the ASEAN Korea FTA. So I think that's certainly a very new area uh, for us to look into. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, thank you for the online viewers. We have actually received a few questions, but then uh, due to the time constraint. So uh, we actually have a question from uh, for Mr. Basukra. So actually this is a question from online in which uh, they state that the presentation mentioned the need to include emerging issues for regional FTA. Could you elaborate and provide examples on the issues of labour digital economy within the context of ASEAN? So uh, Mr. Basukra, will you be able to uh, take this question? The floor is yours. Thank you, Joshua. I think um, our other panelists have, uh, have have gone over a lot on the digital economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also took an example of sustainability as another emerging issue, and that will be uh, increasingly more, uh, become more important in the, in the future. And, and it's not just the, the environment, but the intersection between, between uh, climate change and carbon, carbon trading, uh, those kind of issues will be increasingly important. We've only uh, we, we've we've already seen, uh, for example, the EU uh, considering the proposal for a carbon border adjustment mechanism, which will impact uh, cross border trade of uh, of goods and 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 perhaps services as well. So that will impact uh, that will impact uh, our trade as well from especially from developing countries like like ASEAN members. Uh, so. Uh, this kind of issues, while they're not traditional issues uh, familiar to a lot of ASEAN member states, they will become more important and we will need to address them in our future FTA so that we're not caught on the sort of negative side of, of the issue. Um, the other thing you mentioned, labor. Uh, labor actually, you know, on, on, on labor rights, uh, this is, you know, it, it goes back to the sort of the um, what happens in the in the US uh, uh, in terms of uh, populist backlash against trade. So we need to address labor issues sooner than later. Um, we are looking into um, sort of discussions about labor issues and how to integrate them into uh, into trade. Uh, and uh, and also we know that ASEAN member states actually all of ASEAN member states already have some kind of labor or employment law. So it's not something that we we should uh, be, uh, well, we should be mindful, but we shouldn't be too defensive about this. We need to address labor issues to ensure that trade becomes more inclusive for for everyone, uh, including including uh, 
labor and, and employees. Let me just stop there and okay. uh, see if there are any, any other questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Basukra. As uh, time is of the constraint, I would like to just make a brief summary of our uh, three segments today. Today, we have gone through trade, investment, as well as FDA. And for trade, we do agree that there are certain sectors that will uh, bound to be developed uh, post-pandemic. The smart city, uh, digital infrastructure, uh, future join R&D on industry as well as renewable energy. And uh, we do agree that investment will continue to flourish between ASEAN and Korea based on certain policy implementation by both uh, ASEAN and Korea. And uh, we should explore e-commerce uh, uh, chapter in future FDA as well as to look into the review for ASEAN Korea FDA. And yeah, those are my brief uh, summary of our uh, this roundtable discussion today. And we thank you everyone to the end, as well as the distinguished panelists for joining us today. And uh, we hope to uh, hear from you soon. And then AKC will continue to organize such event. And we uh, hope that you will continue to support us and join our roundtable discussion because this will be an annual event. So we really hope that you will continue to support us. With that, I pass back to the MC. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua and the panelists. Now, this calls for an end to the ASEAN Korea Trade and Investment Roundtable 2021. On behalf of the organizers, I would like to thank all the speakers, panelists, and online participants for your valuable time for joining us today. We also hope that our online viewers gained useful information, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.